then you can say it was nice. The person who did this had an evil heart. You can judge who the person is by what the person did. Now the Bible opens with a demonstration of what God has done. And based on our examination of the activity of divinity, we can then conclude about the character of this God. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. That is the activity of divinity. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And it was so. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God said, and he said, and he said, and he said. This is an expression of God's activity. The activity of divinity. But I want you to observe how God's activity is expressed. How is it expressed? And God said. Now that is highly significant. The activity of God is inseparable from what? His word. Are you listening? The first thing, well, one of the first things we learn about God, Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We learn what He did, we learn His activity. This is the activity of divinity. God created the heavens and the earth, meaning everywhere. Then verse 3 gives us details as to how He did it. And God <coughs> said, God's activity. Is through his word. Now the Bible is written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We're told all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. The instruction we receive, one of the instructions is that God is a God who is intimately bound with his word. What comes out of his mouth leaves his mouth with all his power, with all his life, with all his character in it. So that when we look at God's activity, we should be able to make conclusions about God's ability or God's is this, when I say is this because he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Who is he? Look at what he has done. As the Bible says, the heavens do what? Declare the glory of God. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power of God. We can understand the invisible things of God, who he is, by the creation, which is his activity. Why is it that so many of us do not know God? We don't study God. We don't study what He has done in creation and recreation because salvation is an act of creation. The God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness and shine shining in our eyes to give the, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. Genesis 1 3 says, and God said that they be like that is creation by the word of God. Now, how are we recreated? How is a man born again? James 1 18. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. What does beget he us mean? What does it mean to beget? And Adam lived 130 years and began to send his own likeness after his image, and he called his name Seth. What does that mean that Adam beget? What does it mean? He gave life. And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. Seth gave life to Enos. And Methuselah lived 187 years and begat Lamech. Methuselah gave life. Now, James 1 8 says, of his own will, begat Enos with the word of truth. The same way the world was begotten, if you can say that, and God said, Let there be light, and God said, Let there be a firmament, and God said, Let the heavens bring forth abundantly, the, the waters bring forth abundantly, the moving creatures that have life. The same way the word brought the world into creation, it's the same way the word brings us spiritually to life. The activity of God is bounded in His word. First 
And so Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning, the entirety, the end of the divine alphabet by which God expresses his will and does what he chooses to do. I am Alpha and Omega. If you bring that to the Old Testament, you would have used the words for the Greek for the Hebrew alphabet. In the Greek alphabet, Alpha and Omega. I am A to Z. Ultimately, God's activity is most clearly seen in the highest expression of the word, Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John, 4, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh, and brought to us. The activity of God expressed in the word, the highest expression, Jesus Christ himself. Next to Jesus Christ. The activity of God should be seen in our lives. Example, holiness is an activity of God. He performs it in our lives. Sanctification, He performs it in our lives. Righteousness, He performs in our lives. Love for the world, He performs in our lives. Those are the activities of God, they are accomplished through His Word. How does God cleanse us from sin? Husbands, love your wives. Of Christ also of the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. This word we have no time to study. It is impossible, it is impossible to grow without studying God's word. I don't care how much you come to church. How much time you give and keep giving me? I don't care how many church offices you hold. If God's word does not abide in your heart and mind, we will not grow spiritually because God's divine, God's divine method for spiritual growth is to rule. Not through a lot of arguments and philosophy and secular knowledge. Through the word. And so in Acts chapter 6, when there was a crisis between the Hebrew women and the Grecian women in the daily administration, then there's the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, Acts 6, reading from verse 2, and say, It is not reason for us to leave the word of God and serve tables. Peter and the other apostles said, Look, our major concern in this early church is the word of God. You take care of the daily administration. You run the church board. You determine how what color to paint the walls, what color for the carpet. That's of no interest to us. We will not leave God's word to get involved in these little things. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Acts it will fall. This is Peter. Peter was clear. His priorities as a leader of the church was were clear. The word of God first. I've got to preach. Is there an argument in the church about whether to cut the lawn at six inches or two inches on the ground? You handle that. I have to be in the word of God. As Jesus was preaching to the Pharisees and scribes who almost never understood what he said. When he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, they thought he was proposing cannibalism. He explained in verse 63, John 6, this, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? And they are my life. Now if these words are spirit and life, and we don't put them within, what are we committing slowly? Spiritual suicide. suicide. Someone called me this morning and said to me, she said, Pastor, you have beaten us up all weekend. <laughs> I said, that wasn't my intention. I'm really a nice man. <laughs> she said, you beat us up all weekend. That's not my desire. It really is. You know what I want to see when I get to heaven? I want to look around and see my friends who keep telling me the time. <laughs> because the heaven I want to have a watch so I'll ask my friend what's going on. I want to see all my friends in heaven running up and down streets of gold, plucking the fruits of the tree of life. I don't want to look down from the walls and see them heading for the fires of hell. I don't want to see them. At this point, 
this thirty days, this should be able to recycle that investment. I'll be able to give you the time to schedule for Monday to Friday. You know, God complained about the Israelites. They would do as the, as the, as the heathens did. They would pass their children to the fire as sacrifices. We, as Sabbathists, we do the same thing. We pass our children to the fires by not being allowed them to watch, to get involved in, and to spend their time with And why Christ in the judgment? Many parents will be shocked to learn that what their children became, those men that lost, was largely their fault. If a child knows more rap performers than pioneers, it's not a child's fault. Are you listening? If the child can use more secular lyrics from Jehovah Lopez than hymns of the church, than hymns of the hymn book, it is not the child's fault. It is our fault. This is how God expresses his activity. same power that brought the light when God spoke is the same power that will work in our lives if we trust God's word. Amen. And so I commend to you, as Paul said in Ephesians 11, verse 12, I commend you to the word, to the word of God. The word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance of the faith. I'll ask you a question, don't answer. If someone walked up to you and said, explain to me why the Sabbath is still to be kept. Would you say, hold on a minute and call the pastor? Mm-hmm. Or could you explain the Sabbath? If someone said to you, Explain to me why you shouldn't eat pork. Could you? Someone said, explain to me why we don't dance and drink alcohol and engage in all these sexual amusements which don't characterize God. Could we give an answer that's big between the intelligence? Absolutely. Second Peter chapter. 
this is through God's word and through the power in his word that I read the life of God, the power of God, the, 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 character, the characteristics of God, they are found in his word. That's why when his word is in us, life is in us. Matthew 8, 16. And when evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits out with his hand. <coughs> For his word. Because his word had all the authority of the Father. And so in Matthew chapter 8, when the centurion came to Jesus and said, My servant life had all sick of the palsy and grievously tormented. Matthew reading from verse chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but do what? Speak the word only. And my servants have healed. And then he explained why he took that position. He said, For I am a man, what? Under authority. Not having authority. I am a man under authority. And I said to this man, Go and go with. And to that man, Come and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this and he doeth it. What the centurion was saying is, I am under the authority of the, the, whoever is in Rome, Caesar. Whoever the emperor is, as a centurion, when I speak, I speak with his authority. I am under his authority, so my word has his power. So when I tell a soldier, go and he goes. And he recognized that Jesus was under authority too, the authority of the Father. So he knew if Jesus spoke, his word would carry the power of the Father. He said, just speak. And all of the authority that you are under will be in your word, and my servant shall be healed. The Bible said, Jesus marveled. He said, I have not found so great faith. And the faith was in the word. The, word. the activity of divinity is expressed through God's word. So the Bible says, Thy word. Take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of 
all men. For I have not shunned, verse 27, that's right, to declare unto you all the counsel of God. When I leave this place, I am leaving with a clear conscience. The clarity of my conscience lies in this. I will be able to say to God, Father, I preach the truth. I was direct. I'm going to be thrown down a little harsh and hard. But I left knowing that no one who attended could say this man watered it down. So I leave with a clear conscience. But with a heart that is not sure how many will live by what they heard. I can't control that. But I will pray that the Lord will put into each heart a seriousness about God, about His Son, about salvation, and about the source of power, which is the Word of God. Yeah. This world has nothing to build you on. Nothing. It has a lot to excite you. I grant you that. There's a lot in the world to thrill you. I grant you that. There's a lot in the world to make you think it's okay. I grant you that. There is nothing in the world to build you on spiritually. Nothing. And so we read from John, who was closest to Jesus. How do I say, John most closely reflected the character of Christ. He was close. He knew Jesus. And this man writes to you in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of God is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away. Temporary. But this As the Spirit of God speaks to your heart, and as God listens and watches, and the angels are here, which of you will say, Lord, I have been convicted. I would need to make time for your activity to study who you are by what you've done, by studying your activity in your word, placing your word in my heart, and letting your word build me up. If anyone will say that, raise your hand.
This is how we ought to behave. So I ask you, Father, Lord, to bless them. Put your spirit in their hearts. When Jesus was not yet born, your spirit was in him. When John the Baptist was still in his mother's womb, your spirit was in him. When Jeremiah was in his mother's belly, the Bible says, your spirit was in him. Now put your spirit in every little boy and little girl who has come to my call. Bless them. Protect them from danger. And let them tell their friends about Jesus. Bless their minds. Let them study well at school, but when they have time at home, Lord, let them open the Bible and read your word and you will teach them. Bless their parents, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay where you are. All heads bowed. All eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I present to you this church and the friends who come the guests for this place. Lord, the devil is doing everything to turn our hearts and our minds from Christ and his word. I plead with you, I appeal to you, I beg you. Do all you can to save us because you pay such a high price. Convict our hearts that nothing in this world is calculated to take us to heaven but to take us to hell. Put in us a love for your word, as, as Job said, I have esteemed thy words more than my necessary food. Bless every family. Bless the leadership of this church. And Lord, let this church experience such a transformation that it will be a Pentecost. I offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the day. And God bless you all.